Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, shit. Shit. Man, I, we should get a separate mic for the White Claw. Just that cracking of the can, you know? It just, there's a refreshing sound to it. Like, I know I'm about to be refreshed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, Pavlov's dog. Instead of having a hole drilled in the side of my head, I'm just drinking like a white girl. Everybody is. Dudes, dogs, uh, ladies. Uh, Bud Light just put out a seltzer over the weekend. Yeah, Bud Light, the American beer that's owned by a, what, Dutch company or some shit? Is it Dutch or China? Everything is Whatever, man. I love Bud Light. I don't give a fuck who owns any of this shit, to be honest with you. No, I like Bud Light. Get paid. Get money. Let me rephrase that. I like Bud Light as a company. I don't care about the beer. It's just, you know, I'm not a beer drinker. Uh, I am. I am. Uh, I, li- I like Bud Light. I get down on that. I still shotgun a, I'm a, a Bud Miller he- Light if here I, and there. If I go, I'm a Bud Heavy. Bud guy, Heavy, yeah. yeah. But I'll yeah. drink Bud Light in a pinch. Yeah. I mean, look, anytime we hang out with Post Malone, we have to drink Bud Light because that's all Mandatory. separate round. It's a sponsor. Yeah. We're, we're, we're looking for a sponsor right now. We're in talks yeah. with a bunch of different companies. Bud Light is one of them. I'd love to have Bud Light on. Well. It'd be fucking great. It would be. Um, White Claw is out. Um. Yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> they're a little more by the book than we're used to. Yeah, uh, so, which is surprising. Um, but the other ones, you know, as far as sponsorship goes, uh, we reached out to Natty, Natty Seltzer, yeah. and they were like, "Look, man, this shit is selling itself right now, brother. Mm-hmm. We don't need we don't need two hard dicks bumping against our money, you know, up against our skin." That's a mistake, by the way. Uh, not not having a sponsor, though. Yeah, I agree. Like overestimating your market share. Like if you're if there's something out there to be done, and there's look, there's a hundred percent of market share, right? Mm-hmm. And you get however much you get. But you only get what you fight for. You don't. Yeah. If you if if there's a fight going on, and there will be soon. Oh, like there's we're, gonna be a nude fight we're, going on. We're in the fucking seltzer wars of 2020. We are. Right. Like it's happening this year. You'll start seeing everybody do. They'll start upping advertising, and everybody else, and every category that we've talked to is like, yeah, you know, we're just trying to get into podcasts mm-hmm. before it gets too crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you should. But, you know. We'll see what happens. Natty Seltzer. I mean, they're depending on people who have teeth broken off at the gum line to come in and buy their products. <laughs> right, uh, and right now, there's a lot of them yeah. sucking on it, sucking on that seltzer tit. Yeah. Look, I'm one of them, man. I'm, I'm guilty. Every party I go to, the first thing I, gra- I reach for now mm-hmm. is a seltzer. <clears throat> well, you are white trash. I know. Uh, so I still haven't found that. that. By the way, the Four loco. I've been to, shit, man, I don't know, 50 different gas stations at this point. Right. I haven't found the, the Four loco Seltzer. So I don't know what that tastes like. I can't speak on it yet. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sure it tastes like uh, cough syrup. Oof, which is I hope so. They've all tasted like. And honestly, if Four loco came out with a product now and it tasted like something good, mm-hmm. I'd be like, this isn't Four loco. I would, I would feel like I was getting tricked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be like, no way. It would be like if Hot Pocket came out with a new fucking Hot Pocket and I microwaved it and it wasn't freezing cold in the middle. I'd be like, this is bullshit. This Oof. is some knockoff bullshit. I go crispy on my Hot Pockets. I so. try to, but you got to go like microwave. Three minutes. You can't go, no, microwave is lava hot at three minutes. You mm-hmm. get, you got to go with the, uh, uh, with the, what the fuck is it called? The oven. I like it crunchy. Toaster oven. I'm the only person I know. Who likes a hot pocket crunchy? I'll go three, three and a half minutes on crunchy. the fucking hot pocket. Yeah, like hard, Cooked. brittle. Yeah, and it's weird, mm. isn't it? But I enjoy the fuck out of it. That's fucking disgusting. Well, I am who I am, Dan. Yeah, you are who you are. I uh, want to give a shout out to Hamadi Jasim uh, once again for coming in. Man, these episodes have been bangers that he was on. Absolute fucking bangers. Nobody in the business is offering that kind of insight right now. No, and no, it's funny. We keep. Um, CNN keeps posting shit that we've said. CNN and now the Washington Post did it today, posting shit that we said like four days ago. Yeah. Like exclusive. Like, well, not really. Yeah, not really, because he, <laughs> he said it. Um, like we reported uh, that the bomb, the missiles were empty, mm-hmm. and that's come out now. We reported that uh, uh, the Iraq base had advanced knowledge, and now Washington Post and everybody else is saying that. Yeah. We reported that Iran was not going to really strike back in any real way. Like, all these things that CNN posted that, like, get fucked, guys. Come on. It's crazy. Um, but look, I, I also want to say, though, that I, I've never met anybody with the knowledge that that guy has. 
So uh, <clears throat> as much as it is about our greatness, and yeah. I'd like to say that a lot, uh, it's also about Hamidi's greatness as well. And that guy is locked in, man. I, those pictures and shit, like, yeah. fuck, man. There's only one place to get those. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. But, you know, as it stands now, it looks like we're not going to war with Iran. And instead, we're looking forward to the seltzer wars of 2020. You tell me Trump's not making America great, God damn it! And I'll, I'll throw a, a bone and viv at you, a White Claw, mm. a Bud Light <laughs> seltzer, a Four Loco seltzer, a Natty seltzer. Uh, I, w- I just want to come out with a nice daddy seltzer, you know? It's got to be a seven. It's for the fathers out there. Seven percent alcohol. Yes. You mean. Yeah. It's got to be a seven for the fathers out there who got to put up with all kinds of bullshit throughout the week. When you say all kinds of bullshit, you mean children? Children, coaching, wife bullshit, <laughs> you know. You can need a hard seven at the end of the day to really kick back. And the thing is this. The, the, the seltzer's clear, right? So you can pour that in a glass. Kids don't know that you're close to being a raving <clears throat> alcoholic. Yeah. Um, you can have a sip sip, look like a normal human being out in public. You can also drive with them. Nobody's really going to get weary of, uh, of a guy drinking a clear liquid. You know? Right. Uh, <laughs> and most of these cans, White Claw has become pretty famous now. Most of these cans look like, eh, it could be some type of kombucha, some type of fruit drink. Yeah. So Why not? I mean, look, they're selling uh, Coke, Coca-Cola sleeves that go over beer cans now. That look, <laughs> it looks real, so you can disguise your shit. Are they really? Yeah, that's great. I mean, look, you're you're a child of of the South as well. Yeah. Um, was it normal? Was it of the norm for an adult to be drinking in the car when you were a child? Um, my parents weren't really drinkers, but my extended family, yeah, I would say so. And for me, as a teenager, absolutely sure. yes. Yeah, yeah. So. I, as a child, one of my first memories was I, I was I was pretty, pretty good at, at sports and right. baseball and things like that. Well, both of my parents had to work. I mean, we weren't. I mean, you've heard my dad on the show before. We didn't have a crazy bunch of money or anything mm-hmm. when we were kids. So, like, yeah, you did what you could. And uh, I was I was pretty decent at baseball. And this one year, this coach was like, "Hey, man, I got to have Ross for this game." And they were like, "We can't pick him up. You know, we're sorry." And my coach was like, "Oh, I'll do it." Mm-hmm. You know, and he wasn't. The hilarious thing about him, you could get away with this in like the late 80s, was uh, he didn't have a kid on the team. <laughs> he was just a coach. But he was kind of like, uh, kind of like Buttermaker, I guess you'd say. Walter Matthau? Yeah. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I remember after the game, like, you know, I crushed, hit a home run, we won the game. All, all was well in that world. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just cracked open a beer and drove me home like it was nothing. And he right. was a cool fucking dude. Yeah. Like, I remember, I think it was in fourth grade, right? And if my, if you're my, if my parents are watching this at home, I'm sorry. But the guy was cool as fuck. Um, I think his name was Charlie, maybe. Either way, he'd be like, uh, you got a girlfriend? What's your life like, you know? Um, just talk to me like a bro. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, like this one girl. I think it's blah, called... Blah, blah. I think it's called grooming. No, it was not. So <laughs> I was worried you would say that. It was It was totally not. It was more very brosive of like, I think he, he got divorced. He didn't have kids. And he was just like, eh, fuck it, man. Yeah, maybe. Uh, he, was, he used to be an umpire at this, this league or mm-hmm. whatever it was, right? So I was just like, oh, coach, who gives a shit? Um, but that's how he chatted with me. It was just like, all right, cool, man. Hey, you're really fucking good out there. Proud of you, you know? See you the next fucking game. Mm. That, that type of thing. And you were just <laughs> like, ah, shit. Andy. Andy was his name. Anyways, great fucking dude. Learned a lot about life and, uh, and a little about sucking dick. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but he was fucking rad. Homeboy had a, a roadie in every car. Bud heavy. I feel like I ran into and... this more in the Midwest when I lived in Wisconsin, especially. Like if we, it, it, it was, there were a couple things that were normal there that I didn't notice in other parts. Like I've lived in every part of this country, uh-huh. uh, except I guess I really haven't lived in the Southwest, I guess. Like I lived in t- San Antonio, but that's not really the Southwest in my opinion. That's Texas. Texas sure. is its own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways. Yeah. Uh, it really is, by the way. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I noticed a lot of babies in bars, mm. a lot. Of babies in bars. I noticed that uh, on lunch breaks, midweek, people would drink. It's like the two martini lunch from businessmen back in the day. 
Yeah. But it was a thing that still happens in Wisconsin for sure every single day. Uh, and one of the other things I noticed was road sodas. Like if you're fucking, yeah. if you're heading somewhere, if it's a 10 minute drive or anything like that, depending on, if it's like past 5 PM, you're probably going to grab beer or w- even wine out of the fucking, out of your house and take it with you when you drive somewhere. Like, Oh, like if I was driving over to your house to watch the game or just like to hang out or we were meeting up to go to dinner or something, I would drink on the way there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's one of those things, too, where I remember as a kid, too, like other coaches I had drinking mm-hmm. where this one coach, man, he just had vodka or gin running his breath. I had basketball, and I was just like, man, it's 5.30, 6 o'clock games or mm-hmm. whatever, and I was like, eh, I didn't really <laughs> understand it. I, I think I told my mom, and she was like, oh, he's got a drinking problem or whatever, and it's like, eh. right. Well, As you get older in life, you realize as a man, yeah, life is fucking hard. Does he have a drinking problem or does he have a solution to the problem <laughs> that he had before and that solution is drinking? You know what I mean? I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know the guy. There's two different types of drinking in this world, right? Yeah. There's just casual drinkers. Uh, there's three, actually. Casual drinkers who are just like, oh, yeah, have a glass of wine at dinner or whatever, right? Um, then there's... People are drinking because they got problems. Mm-hmm. You know, just, life is fucking hard. Uh, and then there's just flat out partiers who just want to get black out every mm-hmm. night. And I know, yeah, look, I've known all three groups in my life, but uh, uh, as I've gotten older, I've learned not to judge where it's like, you don't know how hard somebody's life is or what they're going through at that right. moment. You know, now if you're fucking strung out on, on Sherm mm-hmm. or hair on, it's a different story in my book. You know, where you're like, hey, man. A good stiff drink would probably take care of that. You don't need to shoot up in the fucking back alley. No, there's a there's a, there's limits that we can all agree that are probably in our best interest. Yeah, right. Heroin's probably off the table. Meth, gone. Yeah, but <clears throat> I'm not promoting drug use necessarily. Sure, but I think I I have done this, and I know people who are currently doing it using uh cocaine recreationally oh yeah like from time to time yeah. they'll be out and they'll do cocaine and it's fine everything yeah. just it's fine it's totally deal but you know we were at a big meeting in new york and uh somebody's busted out a bag of that I, I feel like that's new york that happens la it's pretty predominant but uh LA as well like new york I, even people that aren't from there get there and they're like oh you do cocaine in new york it's not a big deal it's like being on vacation and eating more food than you normally would <laughs> you know what i mean here's the thing too it's different in New York and L.A. for some reason, where it's just like, oh, all right, cool. They're rich and they're just partying. Like, that's the thing. Right. right? <clears throat> Whereas if you're at a house party in fucking Louisiana, yeah, somebody busts <laughs> out Coke, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's about to go downhill. It's going to be a shitty night. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, part of that, I think, is privilege. Like, if, if you see, and it's implicit bias, too, like if you see somebody uh, with, you know, half their teeth out, snorting cocaine you're like man this guy's got a rough life yeah but if you see like some fucking model snorting coke in the bathroom you're like oh that's she's rich and she's got her life together yeah she's just, she's having a good she's time she's a young person having a good time but if it was the <laughs> same exact person in a trailer park in louisiana it would be like oh man oh that's so fucking true <laughs> man i god damn it i there was this uh yeah i had a wild night one time um fuck i was at a funeral i didn't know where i was um, and I just finished shooting this movie, so like it was like three months, three and a half months on this on this yep. shoot, and it was like fucking twelve, fourteen hours a day. And I had to fly out, and it was in Ohio. It was mm-hmm. in the middle of the night in Ohio, and uh, in the middle of the state. So there was no, there wasn't even an airport close. And the only flight left was like, like a red eye that got me in at like six thirty, and the funeral was like at nine or ten a.m. And uh, I went to the funeral. I had to drive like two and a half hours from the airport, like Cleveland, right, and. Uh, immediately after the funeral, went to the thing and the dinner and blah, blah, blah. And I slept for a little bit. And then I went down to the hotel bar. Middle of nowhere, tiny, you know, three seats at a bar type of deal. Yeah. Right? And uh, <laughs> somebody was like, hey, man, you the dude from that thing? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing in Podunk, Ohio? You know, mm-hmm. wherever the fuck small town Ohio it was. And I was like, I'm here for your funeral. They're like, oh, man, I'm really sorry. Do you want a party? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, why not? And I'm like, we'll take you out, man. We'll show you a great time. And I was like, I didn't know where I was, <laughs> who these people are, nothing, right? And I get taken to probably about 25 miles away to 
middle of a cornfield. Mm. There was one uh, goddamn trailer, like a trailer, you know, like a double wide. And there was like 30 people raging in this double wide. And when I walked in, they were like, hey. That sounds like some West Virginia shit. Totally. And, and, and look, you go to these any farm town in America, mm-hmm. they're all the fucking same, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter what state you're in. And uh, I look, there's, I walk in, and they were like, it's the fucking dude from the thing. And everybody mm-hmm. starts cheering. There is a pound of cocaine on this table. Right. And I'm like, oh, man. The first, my first thought is, now at this point, I lived in L.A. for, I don't know, eight years or whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know, and I'd seen it all coke-wise. My first thought was exactly what you said. I was like, oh, shit. Here we go. This is going downhill. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's exactly where that night went. Um, and I, <laughs> at the end of it, I said, hey, whose party is this, you know? Like, why, you know, they were like, ah. Yeah. Like the, the guy who owned the trailer park was going to prison Ooh. for the next five years, and he had to report the next day. Therefore... <laughs> Him and his girlfriend or whoever the fuck it was. We're, I mean, we're just going hard as shit. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, people outside punching corn, like things like that. Just punching like, corn, you yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, Just punching a fucking corn stalk. Mm. You're just like, this is this is what cocaine does in these types of parts, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, you're going you're gonna to run into some corn punching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But friendly people, um, they drove me back at, you know, 6 in the morning or whatever it was. Slept for 20-something hours in this weird hotel, and then that was it. I was on with my life. Um, But, yeah, man, there is a a stark difference of New York and L.A. Coke versus, like, Mm -hmm. hey, man, you're in a cornfield. In any state, pick a state at that point. Um, And you do. You judge people differently. Well, I mean, across the board. it's – I don't know if it's – is that hypocrisy or is it just – is, it, is that just how it is? You know what I mean? Uh, it depends. Like, like live your best life and dress for the job you want and all that stuff. <laughs> but know your fucking <laughs> circumstances and surroundings. Like, understand where you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, tough call on that one. Yeah. But we, uh, we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs that night. Yeah. And then homeboy went to prison. Well, so it's good to have a going away party, I guess. It is. The weird thing is, is like, I don't, I don't know one person's name. This was right before camera phones. Like I had a, I had a sidekick on mm-hmm. me. Um, it was, yeah, like I said, like Oh seven. Um, so there was no photos of it. No, nothing. Just this weird memory of this party. And, uh, the fuck was I at? T- I was in Tiffin, Ohio. That's where I was. Tiffin. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tiffin, Ohio. Um, but yeah, uh, I did not partake in any cocaine because I, I had already had a long night as is, and I didn't want to stay up all through the next day. You know right. what I'm saying? So um, I stuck to the booze. But uh, man, people raged and dude, we were punching corn. I joined in that. I feel like that's wasteful. Uh, punch corn? Yeah. No, because it, it was his thing. So I was like, "What's going to happen with the crops?" And he's like, "She can't fucking take care of them." And I was like, right. "Yeah, all right. You got a family member or something that's going to come in and do this type of shit?" He's like, "Not really. People are pretty." upset with me you know being the the black sheep in the family going to prison again he said again too yeah <laughs> i really like i've heard from a number of hillbillies over the years that they're the quote-unquote black sheep of their family i'm like i don't know that there's any white sheep in your family no no definitely not believe that you're all shit bags yeah which is fine i mean i'm a piece <laughs> of shit too just let's let's stop pretending that we're not and live our lives uh you know it's better to grasp the universe as it truly is rather than persist in delusion, no matter how gratifying the delusion is. Yeah. That's what Carl Sagan said, and I believe that. He was talking about science. Sure. But I'm talking about white trash. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, there's some overlap. Oh, there's, there's a lot of it. Here and there. A little there's bit a lot of it. it. But I, I, I often think back to that night, and I'm like, man, I wonder, because he'd be out of jail by now. I wonder I was Maybe. Doing. I mean, he may have stabbed a couple people in there. Maybe. I, he seemed to have a pretty flippant attitude about the fact that he was going to prison. Oh, Beyond. And uh, you know the other thing? As I said, what are, you going to, what are you going to jail for? And he goes, dope. Got me selling dope. There's a pound of cocaine on the table right there. And I was like, man, you just don't care. And he's like, well, what are they going to do? Add years to my sentence? And yeah. I was like, oh. Yes, that's exactly what they would do. I don't know. Just for those of you who don't understand the criminal justice system, having been convicted of a crime <laughs> doesn't stop you from being convicted of an additional crime. <laughs> the other thing, too, is like the headspace I was in. I was just like, oh, man. 
here I am out in the middle of nowhere. Like, how do I explain getting arrested in, at a trailer park in the middle of nowhere with people I don't know? And there's uh, cocaine on the table. Yeah, I mean, shit, man. I've done some shady things. I've, I, I would say. I didn't know this going in, by the way. I want to preface That you were this. heading to a... I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not told to me. It was just like, hey, man, you want to go to a house party? First of all, it wasn't a house. Why? Well, I, I, <laughs> it's a house on wheels. I feel like um, maybe <laughs> you should have had a clue at least. Like, no, the girl was normal, man. She was, you know, kind of hippie-ish. Very uh, almost famous-y. You know, like, um, hey, you <clears> want to <throat> come to the party? Jack Donaghy. Alec Baldwin uh-huh. from 30, 30 Rock. Rock yeah. uh, he said, uh, never follow a hippie to a second location. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I've lived most Boom. of my life by that, that maxim. Because Nailed it. I feel like uh, that's just accurate. Ah, uh, that, uh, that's unbelievably true, especially in this Unfortunately, it wasn't, wasn't around that quote when, uh, when you were doing this, probably. No, nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. I think um, was... and, but New York, so, you know, I went to grad school there and I lived there three different times in my life. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> God, you're right, man. I Because I've seen shitty people in New York do coke, but it's New York and you're like, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anything of it. And then everybody had numbers for dealers there. Yeah. So, like, that was a thing. If ever you wanted to go out, and I'm, I, I was never a big blow person, so... Um, it doesn't really affect my life, but uh, I, friends, we would always have to wait for the delivery guy because there's always a fucking <clears throat> delivery guy to drop it off. And then, you know, you did the thing and then boom, well, then we, right. we went out after that. But uh, yeah, you're right, man. No judgment there. And like, fuck, some of the friends are, that I knew were real shitty on it. And it was like, they truthfully couldn't handle their shit like the white trash people out in the goddamn yeah. motorhome. So, well, what are you going to do? You know, start a revolution, my man. I don't know. Start a revolution, brother. Uh, I'll probably just take a nap. I'm not. I'm not with this whole revolution crowd. <laughs> like, come on, man. Are we really gonna do that? This millennial generation that's been completely drained of dopamine and fucking serotonin. We're gonna start a revolution now. No, no. we're just waiting for our bodies to die. Is Bernie gonna win this thing? Bernie Sanders? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He he's up in the Iowa polls right somebody now. Somebody reported today that. Uh, uh, he told Elizabeth Warren in December of 2018 that a woman could never run, uh, win president. Mm. So uh, that's not great for him. But it seems like it doesn't really matter. Like everything slips off everyone's back now. Nobody except for Hillary. The news is too fast. The cycle's too fast mm. now. Except for Hillary Clinton because people genuinely dislike her. Yes. Um, with Trump, it's like people dislike him, but they just it, – it's – no one can focus on one thing. They just keep bringing up new shit. Like if you watch the people on your friends and family or acquaintances on Facebook who are anti-Trump, it's just they, anything they can find that's been printed, regardless of the source, mm-hmm. they will post it. Yeah. Like, oh, did you see this too? God, yeah. it's just like so much stuff. I'm like, Fuck look, them. that's fine. I don't really care. But uh, Hillary people genuinely dislike her oh, because yeah. she is a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. No, people hate her. I, I Look, we had Alex Jones on a Milo. Both of, both, of, both of them said that Hillary was going to get in the race. We're in January now, mid-January. I still have a hard time accepting that, um, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we thought we'd do a weird, weird fucking show today because uh, we're getting ready to leave for Vegas. Yep. You and I are going to uh, McGregor. Um, the, the Conor McGregor fights. We're going to cover <laughs> that, and, uh, and we're getting ready for SHOT Show. Yep. Um, all of us will be there. Matt, Jared, Evan, fucking Steve, Bob, Rick. Bunch of guests, bunch of people. It's one of our last days in the studio here before we take off. And I'm yeah. like, hey, man, let's go and record something weird. See what fucking happens today. Um, well, I had this idea. Someone mentioned this to me um, kind of off the cuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like one of those weird facts. Like, hey, did you know this? And my brain, I was on edibles at the time, obviously, because it was after 5 p.m. Sure. So uh, my brain just started going. And you know how when you you hear something and you you first when, when it's like a, a fact, an animal fact or a scientific fact, you, your brain first starts to like think about all the scientific ramifications of what you just heard. Like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if X, Y, Z or this or that. Right. But then I move into the social aspect because 
personification is a big thing in literature. I'm a fan of literature. So, you know, mapping human traits onto animals is funny. Right, and it's right. It's something which, that happens. What's they're doing in China right now? Well, yeah. Not, yeah that's not, real. Not, I'm, I was speaking metaphorically, but yeah. And the, they're putting a fucking face on a <clears throat> monkey right now in China. So, <clears throat> yeah. What happens when that monkey sees its face in the mirror? I, the whole thing, man. What happens with all of it? I don't know. I actually have been getting a lot of positive responses f- for the idea of dropping kangaroos with AIDS into combat zones. Yeah. So we should probably look into that. Think about it. I mean, that's how I... A lot of people don't know that Drinker Bros is just a focus group for the U.S. military <laughs> to come up with uh, weird ways to defeat our enemies. Well, that was one of them. And yep. When you see kangaroos out there that look, I don't know, pale, kind of pale and gaunt. Yeah. AIDS. AIDS. So AIDS. It's not the wildfires. Welcome. And then you were part of that. So it's like, be proud. Like if in 25 years when all of, of uh, the Middle East has AIDS, you'll be able to look back and say, I did that. <laughs> Me, some willpower, the internet, and a couple of kangaroos. And a couple of roos out there yeah. just hopping along. We got to see what uh, Vincent Marcus thinks about this. Uh, we'll have him back on. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be he, in Vegas. He might be in Vegas. He's, he might be. He might close. be. What was the thing? So you, you were talking to me about an octopus before we went on air, and you said, "Hey, I want to ask you this live. I don't want to tell you anything about it." Yeah, I'm just going to let me introduce the subject. So uh, there are some species of octopus where, and this, it's common throughout. I think most species that the the female is much bigger than the male, uh-huh. and. Because of that, and because the female often becomes violent after sex, the male and certain octopus species, Argonauts and a couple of other ones, I'm not going to get into that because who cares, but uh, you can look this shit up for yourselves. Um, their dick will fall off inside the female so they can escape, and they regrow a dick. Ah, fuck. All right. I mean, I think if, if that was a thing that could happen to a dude, right? Yeah. Transfer that property over to a man. Yeah. I think fucking 80, 80% of your hookups would just drop the dick and, and bounce. It's and coyote ugly, but with your dick. Yeah. yeah. How long does it take to regrow? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't been able to find that out, but I do have a lot of questions that we could take these one by one, and you can add anything that that you you know are curious about. Yeah. So, yeah. again, let's start with the scientific stuff. Okay. My question is, <clears throat> does it... How long does it take to grow back the dick? Because mm. that's right? going to matter a lot, by the yeah. way. Is if it's more than, I don't want to go dickless for more than a week. Yeah, I mean, luckily they have a cloaca, so they piss shit and whatever out of the same hole. I think. Yeah, or not not a cloaca. They have something, but they don't like they don't piss out of their dick like we do. So it wouldn't. Sure. Forget, forget about that part. Sure, sure, sure. Just from an anatomical standpoint. So my over under on a, a regrowth of a dick would be seven days. Seven days? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't want to be dickless for more than a week. And I say for goddamn sure, like I'm not, I'm not hitting anywhere close to 30 days. So if that's a thing too, you're out. Like, I've, look, I've jerked off four times a day already. Mm-hmm. And it is not even 5 p.m. Right. So I've got probably three more in me. Easily. But I, if, there's no if you way. didn't have that, so, so let me ask you this. If you didn't have that dick, that was attached to your body. I would right be now. a fucking rage monster. I would be attacking people physically. <laughs> Probably, right? I mean, that's what testosterone does. You got to get that fucking gravy out of there. It's it's cloudy, clouds your brain. We learned that from there's something about Mary fucking yeah. thirty years ago or however long that was. Yeah, Cameron yeah, Diaz yeah. just had a baby, by the way. I'm sure you guys talked about it on the Revolution. You know, she she had a surrogate. Like she didn't. There's no way she had that baby, child. Yeah. No, she didn't. Uh, at any rate. <clears throat> So that was the first question, how long it takes. And everybody's going to have I, – I, I want Drinking Bros uh, in the comments on YouTube to tell me what your fucking threshold would be. And give me an explanation yeah. why. Like, tell me why. If, you, if, if you're going to say, like, oh, it could be a couple months, tell me why. Or if it's like, I need it today. I need to be regrown immediately, then tell me why. So let's say you were getting deployed, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you're over there. You're fighting for the country. It's, all, it's just a bunch of dudes. Right. Do you need the dick for the deployment? I mean, still you still got to pound off. Actually, because of boredom or just because both, both, just to get that gravy out, right? It's like uh, the consistency of cum is what it does to your brain. It's cloudy. You know what I mean? But let's say it's gone. 
Yeah, that, but that, that you're talking that about ju- you're talking about just the dick and not the balls too, and also not the entire endocrine system in the brain that's affected by that and homeostasis. Do your balls by that. are your balls still attached to your body at this point? Um, that's I, I don't I'm, I don't know if theirs are or not. Okay, there's some kind of like groove in their dick that holds semen, but I don't know if that's like the staging area or if it's the fucking if it's the bakery. You know what I mean? Because if that detaches as well, then if it's the balls as well, good, you probably yeah. wouldn't care. Yeah. You're good, yeah. So there's certain instances where you're like, all right, cool, prison. Probably don't need a dick in prison. Well, I mean, I feel like if you just have a broken off dick in prison, they're going to fuck that hole. Ugh. Is there a hole? There's got to be. Our producer is just, I mean, checked out right now. He is abs- This is the most disgusted I've seen you in a long time. A long time. If there's a hole, then yeah. People are going to fuck it, yeah. Yeah, prison's out. For sure. Because then you're in mish. Because you got a mangina, and then you're having to make eye contact the whole mish, time. Mish, yeah, you're yeah. in mish with uh, your your missionary sex with the dude on top of you. Yeah, and that's even worse than probably in the butt because then you don't have to look at him. Yeah, right. I mean, you can even if it's in your butt, you could still pretend that it was a strap on and a woman. I guess oh, if your if your mind is that strong. <laughs> <laughs> But if the guy is reaching down and holding you by your throat, yeah, and and straight mish, then it's hard to fucking overcome that. Yeah, 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 for um, sure, for sure. Yeah. What's so the next question? The next one is um, <clears throat> this. This is a two parter, I guess. But one is like, how big was the dick to begin with? And the second part is, does it grow back the same shape and size every time, or is it bigger or shorter? Okay. And and do you, does it have to be fully grown before you can fuck again, or can you fuck at three quarter? You know what I mean. Like if you were blessed with a hog, right? You could probably go halfsies and still fucking bang it out. Yeah. Right? Cause if like whatever, you just got to get to average basically, so the girl's not too disappointed. Although even then, if you're breaking it off and running away anyways, doesn't really matter. Yeah. I I mean, let's see. I. So here's my initial thought on this, right? If I if I have whatever size it is, right? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's just go with what I have now, an ocho. It's not going to an ocho. <laughs> I'm used to that size. I'm used to that penis. Right. If something comes in shorter or longer, I'm, right. not, I'm not used to it, then you've got to retool your whole mindset and operation to mm-hmm. figure out the ins and outs of a, of a vagina. And then, man... If it's shorter, you got to work extra hard for shit like that. Then you got to reteach yourself other skills. Yeah. Because maybe you've been deep dicking a lot of people. Yep. And every girl you've deep dicked is used to that. But now you're, you know, you're dealing with a putter instead of a driver. You got to start learning how to eat pussy better. So that's another, you're going to have to pick up another skill, I think, if you go smaller um, than what you're, you're accustomed mm-hmm. to. Uh, especially. Shit, man, especially if you're a good looking dude. Because if you're a good looking dude and then you've, you know, suddenly you have <clears> a small dick on top of that, yeah. like that mindset too is going to fuck with you mentally. What, what if uh, every time you fuck, it grows back a little shorter? Yeesh, and you just save it? Yeah. There was a movie called, I think it was called A Thousand Words. Mm-hmm. This guy just had a thousand words left in his life. Mm-hmm. So he had to choose his words <laughs> carefully. It's very similar to that where you'd have to choose your fucks carefully. Yeah. If you were going to lose, let's say, I don't know, half a centimeter per fuck. God damn Half man. a centimeter. I mean, an inch is three centimeters. Is it really? Yeah. So that's like six fucks per inch. You'd be dead. All right. Six times eight. You seen fuck 48 times in, in your life. You can't fuck with a one inch dick. There's no way. Ah, I think you could. No, one inch is just the head, bro. Look, anything's possible. <laughs> anything's possible. I'm going to look that up on the internet. Because um, there's times we have a wet nude, you know, wet noodle, and uh, you've made it work, you know? Yeah, but a wet noodle still has some length and girth to it. A fucking stub doesn't. What are you going to do? Just rub it up against her? Uh, maybe. I mean, if it do works, what you it can. works. Yeah, you got to do what you can. Survival right Most now. Most of the women I know when they masturbate, they're not doing a whole they're not doing too much penetration like there's some yeah, involved but exactly. a lot of it is clitoral yeah, stimulation exactly. you could uh you can still get the head in at least <laughs> head's a head well i but mean 40 so all right let, let's use that number then 48 times man you had to use that selectively so I, what does the average male live 76 years yeah you don't really start fucking until you're about 15 16 something like that yeah 
So, all right, you're down to 62 years. More or less, you're looking at once a year at that point. It's very, it's kind of like a Benjamin Button type switch where you're just yeah. reverse Benjamin Button. Yeah, uh, but I mean, you could say you would still have the same problem if it got bigger every time you fuck too, because at some point that thing becomes unmanageable. Oh, yeah. You ever see like those black dudes in porn? Now, I've seen, there's a dude in Mexico that has like a fucking three foot dick or some shit. Yeah, but I, you take your standard black <laughs> dude, right? Who's who's banging out these girls in porn? Mm-hmm. Half oh, like there's still five inches that can't four or five inches that can't get inside there. Yeah, like what's the point of that? What's the point dick? that dick that's not even that's nothing. No, and then you got to think about walking around in real life. Yeah, you so gotta, you got to get if some. It keeps kinda, growing. Yeah, and you got to wrap that thing around your waist, the thigh, some type of belt. You I think you get a reinforced penile sleeve. Uh, yeah, it's carbon fiber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just slide your dick on down in there. But at one, but at a certain point, it's going to become a pain in the ass, and you got to sit down and all that shit. Like uh, both of those scenarios to me are nightmare scenarios. Yeah. Um, oof. But I mean, again, I guess, you don't, I guess you go longer. You don't necessarily have to break it off every time you fuck, though. That's a defense mechanism. I'm not saying like you, you, you're taking it as every time you fuck, but it's not necessarily like that. That means. You know, if you're well endowed, you've got a couple of shots to break it off and only lose a little bit. So you're imagine the scenario: you're lying in bed, hangover's already starting to come because, of course, you're in this situation because you were drinking, right? And uh, there's some woman next to you, and she's she's not skinny, right? And then you start what are we to, talking a deuce, deuce and a half, <clears throat> anywhere near there, yeah. Okay, anything over one fifty, one eighty. I would one fifty is not that bad. Uh, it, well, height, 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 weight ratio. Yeah. Okay. W- 185 is fine. Yeah. Right. Cause and unless she's dunking a basketball, she's 185 or more than that's a problem for me. Anyways. Uh, then you start to hear the sounds of children in the other room. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck did I come in this chick or what, what's happening here? She clearly doesn't know how to do birth control. There's children everywhere. Right. So, uh, you got to get the fuck out of there. Uh-huh. And that's, that, that's an easy one. Break it off and leave. Yep. For sure. But then there's some that are just like, oh, God, this is inconvenient. Like it's somebody you work with. Mm. Like, fuck, man, this is stupid. I yeah, should have yeah, done yeah. this. But can I risk another half a centimeter for this? Is it worth it? <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff comes into play there. A lot. Um, and the other thing, this is the last physical well i'd lean uh, well let me answer the question I, okay. if i had shorter or long i'd lean towards long then because at least i still have a dick um and i'm not limited in the amount of times i can fuck yeah because that again if we're going on a half centimeter rule mm-hmm. that's that uh, you're you're down about 48 in your life and then that's it for for me personally you, you guys can <clears throat> do your own math for your own dick at home yeah, and honestly, I don't know if it would be the worst thing if at some point you could start to shrink your like. If let's say you're fucking eighty, how big does your dick need to be then? Doesn't you're you right? Know what I mean, one hundred percent. Like if I if I can manage it with just one, like with a five. Yeah, you're fine. On. Easy. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so I'd go in that scenario. I'd go long. <coughs> uh, what was the What was the last question? The last one is uh, for the octopus. Uh, are there slutty females out there that are just crammed full of dicks? Like oh, there's yeah. just broken off dicks yeah. crammed inside them, and what's the fallout from that? Same as real life, you know? No. You ever fucked a real slutty girl? I uh, That to me is weird because a woman can be a slut by our definition, which means she just fucks whomever. Sure. But what about, like, any girl I date, we're fucking, like, four times a day anyways. Yeah. So, like, the wear and tear on the vagina is not going to be worse for someone who fucks more people. It'll be worse for somebody that fucks more. Yeah. It, it, look, the fuck scenario is definitely in play, but... I'm just saying that's a misnomer. The idea that women who are, quote-unquote, loose right. are literally loose, because that's not true. No, no, no. I, I, I understand that. Um, but I'm talking about like a real slutty girl like yeah. who just doesn't care. <laughs> I, I always go back to the uh, the girl who charged Kobe Bryant um, in that sex thing. That she mm-hmm. Remember she said she got raped? She had like seven semen in her? In her yeah, because they tested her panties. She had like seven different types of semen, and then the case yeah. got thrown out. Yep. And 
you know, <clears throat> yeah, turns out that she was trying too many. to do it. Yeah, exactly. And it was just like, yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. um, so what is that? Seven dicks right there over a period of how many days? Uh, I mean, how long was she wearing the same panties or was she straight leaking cum into those panties? Oh, God, and if so, that. like if, if, if she hadn't been wearing those same panties the whole time, uh -huh. that means she's been getting blasted inside by dudes yeah. repeatedly for days. But how long, like cum can live inside a woman's body for five days, I think. So that's a five day window where she definitely had sex with seven dudes. Ugh, gross. Which is fine. Like, do what you want, but. Yeah, live your life. Taking cream pies from seven different dudes in five days seems like a risky behavior to me. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I but yeah, I, that's kind of where I live with this. <laughs> um, if it's under seven, I'm in. I'd be in. I mean, I'm married now, but yeah. but pre-marriage, yeah. If, if it was under seven, I'd be in. Okay. okay. I'll break that dick off. <clears throat> All right. Now, this is the point where I started to get really high. Uh-huh. Um, and I was I started to think about the like the social ramifications of this whole scenario, right? So, the first thing I thought was, in the octopus community, mm -hmm. is having a small, in process, growing dick a sign of manhood? Is it like having a scar, a chick's dick scars, or is it like fucking having a vein popping out of your bicep because you've been working out, or is it a trophy, or is it a fucking fast car? Is it that to the octopus community? Well, if it was. Because you know he just got fucking laid, right? Exactly. So if it, if it was humans <clears throat> mm -hmm. on that, um, a girl is going to look at you like, oh, who'd you fuck? Yeah. So Right. It, but not let, – let, let's forget about that part and talk about dudes. I would say – We're talking say, about your friends yes, and how yes, they're yes. going to react. But, but <laughs> your friends are going to be like, oh, sweet way to go, right? Badass. Yeah. Because you can't – then you're not going to be able to fake it. And, hey, let's see your dick. Yeah. And if you have one, you're not getting laid and you're a pussy, right? Right. If you yes. don't have one, it's just like, hey, man, you can't fake that. It's like, well, Jeff definitely had sex. Right. Um, you know, whoever that is is like, oh, show me your dick. Oh, he doesn't have one. Well, he had sex. What about you? Yeah, there's no. Brian, oh, Brian's got his dick. Right. There's no, like, uh, you don't know her. She goes to a different school scenario. Exactly. There. She's not from the Niagara Falls area, that yeah. type of shit. So, <laughs> like, uh, you know that. I will say this, though. Interestingly enough, from. The female perspective, right? Right. If a guy loses his dick, mm -hmm. and it's say it takes seven to, <laughs> we'll, we'll go with short term, seven, long term, a month in this scenario yep. to grow back, and you're trying to woo a girl, yep. that period of time will actually force you as a man to get to know her better and to actually woo her and take her out, go on dates and everything like that, yep. knowing the girl's going <laughs> to know that you're not expecting sex or a blowjob or anything else because you don't have a dick. So well, that, that provided you're telling her. I mean, look, in this scenario, octopus don't wear clothes, so we're assuming in your human scenario that we're just showing dicks to each other. Yes. Okay. And, I, and I'm, let's say we've taken on the octopus world and mindset. Yep. The first thing you're going to say is, hey, what do, you, do you have a dick or not have a dick? Well, I don't have a dick. Why? Why well, fuck this girl? When? How long? Three days ago. All right. Female's like, we got 27 days that yep. you don't have a dick. And this is actually going to force a dude to spend 27 days with that girl, get to know her, take her out, have genuine interactions, right. knowing full <laughs> well that you are not going to fuck and or get your dick sucked at the end of the night. Right. So I would say would probably be a good thing for relationships and well, I women. Mean, it would certainly be harder to cheat. Yeah. Now, the, the ultimate end-all be-all low <laughs> for a woman would be <laughs> let's say you dated this dickless dude for a month yeah and then everything was going great you guys end up fucking and then you woke up in the morning and he was gone he thought so less of you mm -hmm. that he waited a full 30 days to <coughs> regrow back his dick fuck you it was not good enough and then he just left that he was just like I gotta break this dick off yeah I that's mean, look from a self-esteem standpoint, if you're a woman, you would not be able to come back from There's it. a book by this billionaire investor called Principles. The guy's name is Ray Dalio, right? Uh -huh. And one of the principles for life and business that he quotes is... Uh, principles? Uh, principles. Okay. Because I was thinking no. about my, my... 
No. Principal at my elementary school. One of the principles is to hire slow and fire fast. And the concept is that you should do your due diligence, mm-hmm. hire people slowly or let people into your life slowly or whatever the case is, and then fire fast. So if, as soon as you recognize something's not going to work, just get rid of it because you're wasting your time. Yeah. And time is the only thing you can't buy back. Um, so in that case, I mean, look, it just is what it is. We get our feelings hurt about weird things. Yeah. Like if somebody tells you, hey, this just isn't working, then look, it sucks to be rejected or whatever the fucking case is, but that is life. And it's not, you, you think of it as rejection, but like a screw doesn't feel like it's being rejected when it doesn't have a pilot hole to get drilled into. It's just like, oh, I need a pilot hole. Let me go find one. Right. Like just find your place. Sure. And hang out there. Right. I don't know. People are weird, but the, that's the, this line of thinking is why I got in to thinking about the social implications of this whole situation. So to to go back to what you were saying, what if, <clears throat> let's say this is a status symbol of some sort, right? Are there losers out there breaking off their own dicks to pretend they got laid? Ah, and think about it from an oct like octopus travel and communities i suppose yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like uh like who who'd you fuck bro it's yeah like, oh she goes to a different school get it school of fish, fish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 uh but the point is would loser octopus be out there fucking breaking their own dicks off like they're hiding behind a rock like i'll show these fucking Ooh. bitches breaks his own dick off then he shows back up he goes guess what guys yeah just That'd got be a weird laid. flex man yeah. It'd be a weird flex. Let me ask you this. Have you ever dated a girl who's made you wait 30 days to have sex? No. Jared, when we had Jared on, remember uh, he was dating homegirl? Yeah. And she put him through that. The Air Force ship? Fucking, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would never agree to that. I, I, so it happened to me. I didn't agree to it. It just happened, right? Well, I would leave. Um, well, I enjoyed this. The person was really funny, and right. um, uh, I enjoyed hanging out with her and shit. She was cool. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Just at this we point We did in my life. other things. That were okay, you know, mm-hmm. we just didn't bang. And then here's the, the, the weirdest thing to me was, because I thought, because Jared had said, dude, it was fucking amazing and it was crazy and blah, 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 right? I had the opposite thing happen to me where we had sex and I was just like, huh, this yeah. is fucking boring. Yeah, and and I, imagine if you had found that out the night you met her. I know. I, I you never like would have talked to her again. Wasted fucking 30 days of my yeah, life. Yeah, that's why I, I would never agree to that or participate in it. And it's not because I don't value the idea of taking my time on something good. Yeah. But again, going back to Dalio, the principles thing, like I need to find out immediately if we have all the types of chemistry that you need to make a good relationship. And if we don't have one of those that are is a major part, then this is stupid. Let's just fucking do something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get that out of the way. And I know that sounds kind of, callous maybe or, or flipping about the idea of sex but no it's i like, think it is true. what it is i think it's true like if we don't have i'm i'm a i'm a bit of a lunatic so if i don't have that part of it i'm i don't want any part of it right so it's like what the fuck is the point you know i I, mean? I would say this every long-term relationship i've ever had in my life obviously besides my wife um yeah usually started like within a week where you were like all right great mm-hmm. now i know what i'm getting into here yeah. and uh we can move forward from there Otherwise, shit, you have no idea. Well, I mean, what's the point? Yeah. Uh, fuck, we get some sponsors, dude. We just, we, again, did the, we did the whole show, and now we have we're, sponsors. We're just, we're rapping about <laughs> life before we go to SHOT Show. We got some sponsors. Pay for the whole fucking show to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking brews. The fucking 25% off sale is, is now over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's you had over. plenty of opportunities you did. to take advantage of that. I know there's a new one, man, and I, I believe it's 50% off an adjustable base. Our internet is down today uh, due to the storms. But, um, yeah, man, fuck. Uh, I believe it's 50% off an adjustable base and $200 off a mattress <laughs> right now. Um, they're always doing crazy fucking deals, man, and it changes all the time. So, look, finest mattresses in the biz. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a mattress. Uh, pillows, sheets, adjustable bases, all that shit. And again, the uh, 36-month pay-as-you-go program. Mm-hmm. No interest is still in full swing. If you are military or first responder in this world, uh, you get 15% off 
forever on the store. So you can you can pop back into that at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. But uh, it's something you need in your house. Um, I've, I've got fucking nine of them. I love these goddamn things. Yeah, I've covered all my walls in, in ghost beds now. Pretty much, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, next up, speaking of octopus dicks, yeah. we've got Roman. <laughs> GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. Boner pills. Roman. Yeah. I mean, if you're an octopus out there and you're having trouble getting hard. Well. Or you just want to get extra hard for your special lady. Yeah. Pop one in. You know what's a great time for that is uh, Valentine's Day. It we're is, yeah. Look, we're less than a month out at this point. Um, let's say you've had to work a lot. You know? You're ha- you haven't been giving her that good dick. Quarter four is very busy for a lot of people. And then it Quarter takes you a little really bit of time busy, to yeah. get back in the rhythm in January. Absolutely. Right? Put a few pounds on for the holidays yep. like everybody else does. Getting back in shape. Uh, you haven't been giving that good dick. Dude, go to fucking GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. Get these boner pills. Yeah, you need them. Just ship them right to your house in a discreet package. Yep. She'll never know. And then all of a sudden, Valentine's Day, boom, dude, it's popping out of the skin. And uh, you can get your get your life back on track. You can get your wife back on track. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can tell you there's no domestic issue that can't be solved by a hard penis. No. There really isn't. There I really learned isn't. I learned that from OJ, I believe. Uh, Simpson? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go to GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Free shipping, free doctor's visit. So when you go there, um, you know, you answer five questions and that's it. You're not walking into somebody's office, you know, and she's tugging on your ball sack, mm. sitting there talking to you why you can't get hard. Imagine having that conversation with a female doctor. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, bitch, why don't you get off my nads and give me some fucking pills? That would break. be rough. You know, I don't need that shit. Go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get those boner pills. Next up, we got expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. What are, you, what are we doing with that, Dan? What do you mean, what are we doing with it? Protecting your digital butthole, oh, aren't you? Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't even know what kind of butthole an octopus has. I don't know if they have one. I mean, they've got a shit somehow. Somehow. And, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. But what they don't have is electronics. You do. You have a bank account. Yep. You've got emails. Oh, yeah. You've got all kinds of weird shit that you save. You've got nudes. On your phone, don't be mm-hmm. one of these assholes that gets your shit leaked. No, nope. don't lose your don't lose your fucking your bank accounts and all that stuff. It's cheap as fuck. It is seven dollars a month, and you get the first three months for free. Uh, go to go to uh, expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today. Again, just like Dan said, sign up, sign up for the year. You get three free months, dude. Seven bucks a month runs seamlessly in the background of every electronic device you have: iPhones, uh, iPads. Desktops, hard tops, soft tops. Uh, last but not least, who do we got, D'Anthony? Uh, Kill Cliff. God is, damn right uh, we do. It's that thing right in front of you there. Kill Cliff. CBD. CBD.com. Here's how much I love KillCliffCBD.com. This can, I'm going to show this in the camera. This is empty and popped. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't even leave it on the fucking desk as a prop. I popped it open and drank that fucker on a show the other day. Um, I, Dude, I love these things, man. 15 calories a can, uh, no carbs, no sugars, 25 milligrams of CBD. You will not test on it. Um, if you're a uh, police or uh, if you're a first responder out there, uh, all the way around, you got to take drug tests and shit. It says it on the can. It's Kill Cliff. I trust him. I believe him. Yeah. And um, this is my fucking go-to after workouts. Um, boom. I have one of these fucking things, and that leads me right into the night. I, I have one of these every single night, um, and I use my own promo code. Go to KillCliffCBD.com um, and use the promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off a case and free shipping. Knocks it down to like $3.99 a can. It's the same price as a can of Monster, except you get CBD in that bitch. Yeah. Um, and these are the only ones you can trust right now. They are, yeah. It's Kill Cliff, for Christ's sakes. They've been so, around for a bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan. They got uh, three flavors. Mango. Grape. Grape's my favorite, by the way. I hate to have a favorite son, but it's grape. I'm I'm the uh, orange Kush guy. Kush. It's my favorite. I like the mango, too, though. I did, yeah. Big fan. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan. But uh, the grape has, has got my heart and my mind and, uh, and most of my body in it. So that's where I go. Uh, that's where I go. 
I want to talk about Bezos, by the way. Can we finish this? I just want to go through. I, I found something uh, that describes the insemination process. <laughs> and it's there's a couple of funny parts. I just yeah. want to go through it. So a tiny male uh-huh. throws a quote-unquote modified arm, which is what they're calling the dick, I guess. Oh, all right. Uh, containing sperm uh, at a female, which will then swim towards the female's mantle, which is the... A mantle is how you say vagina and octopus, I guess. I like that, actually. It's a classic. So term. I'm going to start saying that. I'm going to start telling I women. I want to lay my dick on your mantle. Yeah, like, just let me in that mantle. Yeah. Come on. Uh, and uh, then it finds its way inside her, which is, I, I feel like that's a lazy way of describing things. Sure. Well, tell me how it found its way. Yeah. Like radar? Like, how, what the fuck? Uh, then it fertilizes the eggs. And it also says that, a female's eggs can actually be fertilized by more than one other octopus at a time by storing them in the mantle cavity. So it could have multiple children inside of it growing from different dads at any given time. Oof. Which would make it perfect uh, for one of those slutty type situations you were yes, talking about. Yes, imagine that on a Springer episode. No, I'm just thinking about that woman that tried to to jam up Kobe. I mean, she could have been pregnant with half the Lakers team right then. Yeah. All at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the male's modified arm develops a pouch under its eye until it's called upon, uh, at which point it explodes out of the cavity and swims across. So it actually detaches the dick. Okay. And then fucking, this is just one particular kind of yeah, octopus, of obviously. Yeah, of course. So it basically launches the dick from a distance. Okay. It, it's firing dick missiles at this poor female octopus and I say poor female octopus despite the fact that she would murder him if he got closer right 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 um, this sounds like my life wow did you see Antonio Brown today yes Jesus he Christ he threw a bag of dicks at his uh, is it his ex-wife or his current wife he was calling he was like you're a bunch of bitch ass cops and they were taking his kids and wife away from the house yes basically. and he threw a bag of dicks at them but they were those gummy dicks I mean I somebody sent me gummy dicks recently I ate every single one of them yeah so he's throwing bags of dicks to people. Yeah, he's he's definitely got the CTE. That that man is uh he's pretty much donezo. He's fucked up. If you're waiting around for that comeback. Ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Um to go back to your kangaroos thing, uh Bezos uh just gave the fire victims of Australia six hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Thanks, Jeff. It's pretty specific. Was that what the tax write off was? I don't know if like maybe it was just a sixty nine joke. Uh, Can you imagine that? It'd be a good one. I mean, that's about a hundred grand less than what that chick made for posting her titties. Yeah. Was it just tits and that? that I, don't, thing? I don't know. I never saw it. Um, we should sign up for that. I wonder what it was. What if it was a beef shot? I mean, she was selling. They shut it down. Right? I'm sure you can find it. Yeah, yeah everything's on the internet forever. If she, if she was, I wonder if she was throwing a beef shot. So that's if you're gonna sign up for it on on one of those things, like you expect it to be like tits, but what if it was just a fucking blatant spread labia shot where you're just like, whoa, that was <laughs> not what I was expecting by donating this to Indiegogo for a Australia fire. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, Bill Hicks had this idea for a Coke commercial back in the day, and he said, like it was just this long drawn out process, but basically it was like. It starts at a woman's face and it pans down. Mm-hmm. It keeps panning down. She's she's totally naked. She's right. got tits are out. She's rubbing her tits. Keeps panning down. She's her hand is going down her chest to her stomach. Keeps panning down. She's spread eagle wearing high heels. Right. And she reaches down and starts playing with her clit. And then it just like music starts playing and it just says drink coke. <laughs> I'd buy. Why not? Buy one Coca Cola from that. Why not? Um, I'm I'm really curious to find out now <laughs> about why was that specific amount? Uh, that specific amount, and then again, if that woman was throwing out beef shots. Oh yeah, what's what was her name? Jamie, do you know her name? Yeah, it was the uh, what was she an Instagram model? Yeah, something like that. Because I would I would have to assume now at this point that with the thousands of orders that somebody would have reposted. Hey, man, here's what you get for the money. Her name is... You know? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you would... Look, it's... it's. Uh, I guess 
for a good cause, I think people would probably do it either way. Kalen Ward. Kalen Ward. But again, I'm assuming it was like a harmless set of tits. And probably. not like a spread beef. No penetration I mean, it, or anything. It, she, her story is that uh, her, her family like disowned her and shit. Like, well, I don't know, so would, they, the would they disown her over just a picture of her titties? Because she's got her tits out pretty much in every goddamn picture on the internet anyways. Can you find it, Jamie? What's her name? Kaylin Ward. K-A-Y-L-E-N Ward. Kaylin Ward photo. I mean, there's one of her in a shower with her tits out here. Is that it? I guess. I mean, that's... I don't know if I'd pay 10 bucks for it. I mean, here's another one of her with a fucking dildo in her mouth. Yeah, but there's nothing going on, right? No. There's, there's, it seems like there's a lot of pictures of her with her tits out. So I'm, I'm assuming there had to be something more than just that. I mean... Oh, no, it's, it's a picture of her asshole and vagina, yes. It is? Yeah. Well, let's pop that over here. Can I, let me uh, take a little piece. But it's, this one is covered up. With an that one's covered up. Yeah, but that picture well, is out there. That's I worth, mean, look, that's worth ten bucks. You think so? Yeah, dude. Mm. If you the, think, here's the thing. I would give ten bucks just because I support what she's doing. Like I support the idea of uh, having your tits and, and butthole out. I tell you what. Can you find the unblocked version of that without a happy face over a vag? I'll find it. Because if you can, what that beeve looks like is going to have a lot to do with how much money you give. Right, I mean, she's because uh, you can always go over and tip, right? That's a big thing now. Yeah, everybody's tipping for things. I would definitely want to know. All right, what that is, because like depending upon how great it is, then you're going to tell your friends, "Hey, man, go and donate to this." What was it, Indiegogo? Uh, I don't know what you use, but yeah, something yeah, like one that. of those funding one of those. crowdfunding things. Like, hey, man. Um, all right, let me get a, a closer look at this. What's your what's your call on this? Just first glimpse. For t- I mean, look again. I would do it just for the uh, for the cause. I'm not gonna pay her ten bucks to. See- I wouldn't pay anybody ten dollars to see their fucking butthole and vagina. That's a great shot, though. I would just ask to see it. That's worth that's 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 easily worth the ten dollars. Um, I understand why her family disowned her now. Why is that? That's a pretty. That's your whole entire pussy and your asshole right there. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, it is. God, it looks like it's this girl my friend. This looks like a girl my friend used to date. Uh, she was from Australia. I don't know that this woman is from Australia. I don't know what her deal is. I don't either, man. But this is this is this is easily worth the ten dollars. I'll put it to you this way: if I paid ten dollars and this is what showed up, yeah, I, I'd write I'd write back and say thank you. I was not expecting this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. I mean, if. Uh... If that those were the circumstances, and yeah, I would say yes. But again, I would pay ten bucks just for the cause itself. And I would too. But here's the thing: and you I don't know, mean I don't mean just the fires. I mean the fact that she's using her butthole and vagina to help people. I think that's a noble thing to do. Absolutely. But you you also know right that if somebody's doing that for one of these campaigns, yeah, your first thought is I'll see a tit. You know, maybe just one tit, maybe two, nothing more than that. Yeah. If that shows up in my inbox as my Indiegogo gift, dude. I am fucking amped, and I probably go back and I I throw another ten for something like that. Look, I mean, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of important people do a lot of important shit over the years. Yeah, like uh, Jesus, Malala Yousafzai in Afghanistan. You bet. Now this Mahatma one, Gandhi. Uh, not so much Gandhi. I thought he was kind of a dick. To well, be honest. but uh, this woman is right there with Jesus, probably. <laughs> Or she sacrificed for for us. She lost her whole family for, over this. Oof, I I do understand why she lost her family though. This when would have gaping pussies out there. This like would that. have no bearing on me. As a matter of fact, if you were part of my extended family, a second cousin or further, yeah, we would just have gotten a little bit closer. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> man, uh, way to go, Kalen. I will because look, a lot of celebrities take shortcuts. Yeah. She definitely did not, and that's a great photo. Um, that's something you can, uh, and that's something you can set up, set up pretty easily. Of like, hey man, once you click it and buy it, yeah, probably just ships to you, and she doesn't do anything. 
I don't know if it uh, – did she send physical pictures to people? Well, it's, it's this, right? Yeah, but it's digital. Yeah, it's digital. So, I mean – but it's, no, not physical pictures, but a digital photo. And that's enough, right? <clears throat> like I'm not going to bitch and say, hey, why didn't you go down the photo mat and <laughs> print me off an 8 by 10 of that? I mean, I would <laughs> – I would ask at least. <laughs> you want that framed? I would want a Polaroid. That way I know it's the only version of that particular picture. Uh, it's too much work. I, I understand this whole thing, but that's worth it, man. Yeah. It's worth the 10 bones right there. You probably saved half a roux, and in the process, you get to see some spread beef. Yeah, that's true. It's uh, not a bad day at the, the J-O-B. What, uh, so I posted uh, a meme today. Mm-hmm. About the, the OJ one? Yeah. It says, pro tip, if too many dudes like your girl's picture, send her this. And it's a picture of OJ Simpson. Like, mm, mm. Yep. And uh, some woman just had a problem with it, apparently. Uh, Does she follow you? She said, pro tip. This is her response. She's deleted it now, but luckily, uh, Zach Hurd was kind enough to capture it. Hey, way to go, Zach. <laughs> uh, she said, pro tip. Yeah, she did follow me before, and I have no idea why, but we'll get to that in a second. Does <laughs> she follow um, you now? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Uh, she said, pro tip, domestic violence and intimidating your female partner is never an amusing joke or meme. Uh, hashtag never forget. That's what Zach said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, uh, clearly she said she supported our brand and, and blah, 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 but I can't support this. I'm like, well, clearly you've never listened to a single episode of Drink It Bros. No. I don't know what brand you're fucking talking about, but our brand is nonsense. Yeah. Even this one, this show, Jesus Christ. Yeah. This was terrible. Uh, Horrific things have been said for an hour plus now. Yeah, I I just don't understand how anyone could be offended by. Look, being offended by something I said is like being burned by lava. You kind of put yourself into that position. Yeah. Like, you know, it's lava. It's hot. You can see it. It's fucking red. Yeah. There's steam coming off of it. You walk over and touch it and you whine that the lava burned you. No fuck face. You burned you. Okay. Yeah. That's what really happened. You don't follow at Dan Holloway on Instagram and expect, no. you know, kitten dicks and kaleidoscopes. You're no. going to get some of the worst shit you've ever seen. It's, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's, <laughs> I, I don't know how long she'd been following me. I don't know, but it's just that stuff like that happens on the internet so much. Like if I see something that I disagree with or dislike, I do one of two things. I either troll the person mm-hmm. because I'm bored or I just keep scrolling because, like, how much emotional and social energy do people have that they're investing it in these, uh, like, discussions on the Internet over who is right about what? Uh, look, I, I don't, I don't, I just. You should never, anybody that says you should never something, like, it sounds like a challenge. Yeah. You know what I mean? The only thing I rage comment on is, I think, Twitter, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. I don't take the time on Instagram or whatever. And even then on Twitter, it's mostly because it's like, it, you don't have to follow the people necessarily. Yeah. They could like something else and it'll pop up in your feed of saying, yep. your friend liked this fucking tweet from whatever, right? Right. And then I'm like, God damn it. Who is that? Fuck you. Like, I've got to throw a fuck you in there. Um, yeah. But otherwise, like if you're on Instagram, for whatever reason, I value my time on Instagram. And the only people mm. I follow or, or I know and I find them remotely interesting, if I'm out and somebody's like, hey, man, why don't you follow me on Instagram, right? Mm. Girl or a guy. Mm. And we, we had this at one of those fucking TED Talks things we did or whatever it was, right? Right. Um, hey, why don't you follow me on Instagram? I was like, what do you do? She was like a mom of two. Mm-hmm. I was like, I already have one of those. It's my wife. She's a mom of two. Good on all that. Anything you post is really not going to be that exciting. I was like, I know, but it's just nice to have a follow. It's like, all right, great. So I'll follow them and then, then just mute it. The problem is the, the f- your feed is limited. Yeah. Like you only – I want to see a certain type of thing. I like most of, the pe- most of the things I follow are personal friends and meme accounts. Yeah. So, so it's like if, you, if you're not one of those, probably, fuck off. Yeah, probably not going to. <laughs> probably not going to follow you. Not going to slang no, you the old follow. It's no offense. Like I, I'm interested in what you have to say sometimes, but make your account public so I can look at it when I want to. Yeah. Like if you post something cool and make it private, then I'm never going to see it. That's just the way it is. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we would. I, mean, I would never see anything. It would just be all nonsense. No, all of it. 
all of it's all nonsense. There was a while there for me. It was all fucking meme pages. Yeah. And I had to cut back on the meme pages. Well, you have to figure out the right ones because some of them are owned by the same people and they just repost the same shit. I know. And I can't see the same one four times. I can I, see it twice. I had a guy on my show. I had one of those big meme p- posters on my show. He had like a million plus followers. Mm-hmm. Just because I was curious about that world. Because I was like, hey, man, I noticed you guys tag each other and it's the same people. And he's like, well, it's the same accounts. Yeah. And they own like four or five different ones. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Jesus. Um, so... It's a, that meme world, by the way, is super dark. After doing that episode, I was just like, fuck. Yeah, it's like, uh, what the fuck? How could any normal person, I guess maybe people just don't understand the internet, but how can any normal person uh, come across my page? And I post memes a lot that I think are fucking funny. Yeah. Because I like to talk about weird shit. Like I posted one about how birds aren't real the other day. Yeah. Uh, because I think it's funny. Right, and I want to see the com. I, I I post shit like that because I want to see our fans comment on shit and talk and say fun because our fans are fucking crazy too. Yeah, I want to see them say crazy shit. What I don't need is some fucking housewife <laughs> who's trying to now. Now I just looked at it a second ago. She's trying to high road me. Like, oh well, I mean, I just I work with veterans and blah blah blah. Like, I don't give a fuck. Every we all work with veterans. This whole community does, motherfucker. That's not like something that sets you apart from anybody. And you also. Don't get carte blanche to come onto my page and bitch about memes I post just because you work with veterans. That doesn't buy you shit. Yeah. Even if it was a veteran doing it, I wouldn't buy them shit. Fuck you, <laughs> dummy. Uh, I was I was scrolling through my phone here. Mm. Internet's down. It's off and on here today. Again, weird show. We're leaving for a shot show um, in the morn. But uh, when I get to the drinking bro of the week, this is submitted by Chris Strew. He says, hey, guys, love the podcast. I was wondering if you could bring to light... Uh, Something that happened in uh, Mass recently. I'm assuming that's Massachusetts. Or good old Massachusetts. Right? But yes. I, I'm I assuming. <laughs> or it, it happened at his church. You know, something in Mass Sunday afternoon. Uh, a couple of COs at, at a maximum security prison were assaulted. Officers. Yeah, I, I know that. Come on. Anything man. else? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I caught a CO falling asleep on death row. I mean, that's in every public enemy song, obviously. Uh, caught a couple a couple of COs at a maximum security prison were assaulted last week at Shirley Maximum Security Prison. Two members of the squad, uh, Ilhan Omar and uh, Ayana Presley, came into town with other DOC officials and visited the prison. When told about the assault, they just brushed it off as though nothing happened, but instead wanted to meet with the prisoners about how poorly they were being treated by the justice system. Sounds about right. Uh, which is just fucking straight up ridiculous. She posted a video on her Twitter about the experience, which is just as appalling. Uh, here's the news article and, uh, and the Twitter feed um, because nobody else is really reporting this. It would be rad if you guys could give these guys a shot out. Congratulations, we just did. Um, and I'm look, I'm reading the article. It's legit, obviously. And they've got pictures uh, of them at the prison yeah. and everything else. <clears throat> Um, look, man, I, I, so first, just, of all, just, first of all, cheers and thanks, thanks for your submission. Just to clarify this, so uh, two COs were assaulted. Three. Three were I assaulted. I think so, yeah. And injured, I guess. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it wouldn't have drawn yes. this much attention. Correct. And uh, her response is to come to the goddamn jail and take the side of the people who assaulted the CO. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, a couple. Oh. I'm assuming it's two. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But yes, um, look, you're going to see, Chris, they're going to see this a lot more coming up uh, as we head toward the 2020 election. Yeah. They're they're going to bury everything that you possibly. That you possibly can at this point. I, I mean, all, all of these people, Ilhan, because she's up for reelection, right? Isn't that every two years for that job? For Congress. Yeah. yeah. But all of the squad. All, all, of them, yes, all of them, yes, correct. They're all up for re-election mm. in 2020, along with Trump, or along with you know some senators and all this other shit. So, like, dude, you're going to see the rest of this year the worst news cycle ever, where it's going to be so far slanted left. You're going to have to fucking lean as, as hard as you can right to stand upright. It's it's going to be fucking brutal, and. If you don't share little stories like this, you're right. No one will ever know about them. Of course, we'll talk about them. So submit whatever you want, obviously. And we'll, we'll chat about it and get it out there as much as we can. 
I mean, you saw what happened with the, the Richard Stayscott case. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're more than happy to talk about it, but buckle up because it's going to get worse. Um, and to that point, not only is the news changing, but textbooks are changing. Um, I, as much as I hate CNN and New York Times and all that other shit, I read it because I want to be, mm-hmm. I want to read both <clears throat> sides and see what's going on on both sides. Um, and I, I pride myself on doing that every single morning that I wake up. Um, I also don't want to be stuck in a conversation where I can't, can't or don't know what's going on. Right. Uh, when I say can't, I mean can't. I can't contribute to the cons, the uh, the conversation, mm-hmm. or I don't know what's going on. Therefore, I also can't contribute to the conversation. There was a really fascinating article on Sunday about uh, textbooks in in different states and how the narrative is being rewritten differently as far as American history is going. Um, And it's changing. Just little bits here. Little, like, they did a study on a book, Texas, or books in Texas versus another state. Well, Texas, a lot of people don't know this, but most textbooks nationwide get vetted inside of Texas before they ever make it nationwide. Right. So there's been a lot of weird shit from both sides. It depends on who's in in control at the time. And that's what the article said. And they were like, look, as you're reading this, the shitty part about it is it's kids, and this is what they're being taught. As you're reading this, you're being influenced from a kid to an adult for somebody else's political agenda. Pretty much, Instead yeah. of what the <clears throat> facts are. Um, and I think, me personally, this is going to keep happening over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. I and, mean, everything is going to – we're in a we're in a death spiral when it comes to – the politicization of every single aspect of life and facts just facts um and i think it's only going to get worse and i think sadly i think history is going to eventually be erased american history where every statue every figure uh, you know anybody you could pull something up on of they had a slave or they had a thing or whatever it is in this life they're going to pull it and like you know by the time a hundred years from now Mm. All of this narrative will be totally different, and our kids, grandkids, great grandkids, like it's all going to be fucking different. There's I, a uh, there's a good series called Continuum. It was on. Uh, it's Canadian. I can't remember uh, what the name of the fucking chant, what what the channel it was on, or what channel it was on. Some Canadian channel. It was like the Canadian Sci Fi Channel, basically mm-hmm. back in the day. So there's four seasons of it, and it's it's actually kind of on this subject. And it's very interesting, like how we feel about uh, free speech and terrorism and all this other stuff. It's a it's a really well written piece. So uh, yeah, but the basically what happens is uh, what Ben Franklin warned us about, and uh, that is if like the more we want security, the more we give up. Right. So at what point are we willing to just like accept? inherent risk and move on with our lives and live our life like live the life you want to live and accept risk without limiting the life that you want to live it's it's a delicate balance it is and me personally the more and more shit you sign up for buy (laughs) online do everything right everybody wants your fucking phone number your address somebody asked for my birthday yesterday on on an app i was downloading an app and i was like had nothing to do with alcohol or cigarettes or anything it was Mm -hmm. just a normal fucking picture app or whatever it was and i was like there's no fucking need for my birthday on your goddamn app um i didn't sign up for that one because i was like i draw the line there Mm -hmm. but uh everything else i've pretty much just given into of like the bullshit we need a two verification thing we Mm -hmm. need your phone number as well everybody wants your goddamn phone number and uh and it sucks but i got to a point where i was just like you know what man i'm tired of caring living my life around security or what somebody else mm-hmm. might have on me uh fuck it I, i'll give you my shit and if it turns out bad I'm, i mean i guess fuck me but um it is what it is yeah um so sadly i think that's going to continue to happen and then man i somebody said something to my five-year-old the other day because he came home and mm-hmm. uh, he'd asked about donald <clears throat> trump and I don't, he doesn't know anything about donald trump as far as i knew um he's usually when the kids are home we have like you know, kids shit on like right, fucking simple songs or whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Or YouTube or whatever they want to watch. I usually leave Dave Rubin on <laughs> if I'm babysitting or anything. Leave the Jim Jones doc on. I like Dave Rubin, by the way. 
you know who that is? I don't. Look him up. I will. I will. Um, but anyways, he came home and was just, uh, he said, uh, he said, Dad, why, um, uh, why can't Donald Trump get arrested? Um, and I was like, what do you mean? Where'd you hear that? And he goes, uh, like a teacher or somebody like, you know, parents go to mm. lunch at <clears> the <throat> kid's school and you're allowed to do that whenever you want or whatever. I was like, where'd you hear that? And he was just like, well, um, somebody was talking about Donald Trump getting arrested and, and some woman said that uh, he can't get arrested no matter how bad he is because he's the president and he can do what he wants. And I was just like, who said he was doing anything bad? He was like, ah, this lady did. And I was like, was it a teacher? <laughs> like, like, I want to, <laughs> so do you have to be a parent to go to lunch? Yes. Fuck. Yeah. So can you make me like co-legal guardian of your kid? And I'll start, I'll show up every day to this <laughs> <laughs> elementary school lunch <laughs> with like a PowerPoint. Yeah, and just start indoctrinating the shit out of children, but well, with with and totally false information. Well, the the teacher does sit with you, so you know there's only so much you can say and do and whatever, right? But uh, you only have to you have to pick out which kids in the crowd are the influencers, right? Then you convince them, and they convince everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the way it is. Like uh, a, there's old, there's this uh, old kindergarten. I can't remember who it is, but there's this comedian, and he said. That he, like he and his wife are Jewish, but they're raising their kid. They're 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 of Jewish heritage, I think, but mm -hmm. they they're non practicing. They don't give a shit about any of that. So they're raising their kid fake Jewish. Like they're telling him all kinds of Jewish stuff that's wrong, <laughs> just so he goes out <laughs> into the world and believes that, <laughs> and convinces other kids that it's real and shit like that. Look, I always wanted to uh, see the experiment of you raise kids as elves, two twins at elves. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, and I mean, uh, two kids, twins, yep. as elves, elf clothes, everything. You don't talk to them. You go out and give them food. They kind of learn how to grow up and take care of each other and all mm -hmm. that other shit. They're dressed as elves every single day. You don't talk to them, so they have to find their own language. They figure out their own language mm -hmm. and communicate with each other and then drop them off uh, when they're 18 in Times Square with $100 on New Year's Eve. What would happen? Why the elf part? Because uh, th they would have to explain that to everyone of like, hey, why are my, why are you, a, I don't understand why you're dressed like an elf. And they would be like, <laughs> I don't understand, like this is, these are my, my clothes every single day for 18 years. Yeah. I mean, you could, I, I would say, I would want to incorporate Jimmy tree legs into this somehow. Oh, yeah. From like uh, he's, Pinecone Day from he's their, Revolution. Yeah. yeah. He's their deity. Like all they know is that they have two parents and that Jimmy Tree Legs created the world. Oof. Do you think it's happening somewhere in the world right now? Oh yeah. The Amish. God damn it. But they have Rumspringer, right? Yeah. That like you go you figure out. You can go out. figure out yeah. life. Um I wonder if that's really going on though in some other society where it's just like, hey, or somebody fucked up in Germany well, or I something. Well, I mean China, North Korea. Yeah. China. That's true. Like they're North Korea doesn't have any internet. Oof. So it's like they it may as well be 1950 there for them. Yeah. And whenever, whenever anyone escapes, they, it has to be like, holy shit. I know. Like, I didn't realize that everybody was so offended by everything now. I've been dying in a prison camp for yeah. the last 30 years. Imagine if you're an 18-year-old male, you escape North Korea, and then somebody... You, you find open up internet the computer, porn. That's it. It's just porn hub. The that, first that thing you up. find is internet porn, and no one sees you again. You die at the computer. <laughs> like, two weeks later, you're dead, just covered in semen. Forgot to eat, bro. I was cranking it. Sorry, man. Uh, you get it. Like, honestly, he would probably last a long time because they're used to not eating anyways. Yeah. A box of saltines unopened next to him. Yeah. Probably last 38 days. No water. Uh, and saltines. Weird show, D'Anthony, but I had fun today. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to Vegas. Um, look, we're going to have a, a bunch of guests coming up uh, over the next couple weeks. Uh, some of your favorites, some of our favorites. And uh, it's SHOT Show in Vegas and we'll be at the Conor McGregor fight this weekend, D'Anthony. Yeah, if you're going to be out in Vegas uh, either this weekend, mm -hmm. like we'll be there the 16th through the 23rd or some shit like that. Yes. So if you're in Vegas any of that time, hit us up. Let us know where you are. Yeah, hit us up on uh, Drinking Bros Podcast on uh, Facebook. And um, also, um, one of the funnest events, like the McGregor fight is Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then the AFC and NFC Championship are Sunday. Yep. Which is fucking rad. There's a bar <clears throat> that I heard OJ goes to. We're looking into that. To uh to do it. I uh if we could watch the game with OJ, the juice, that'd be great. We're looking into it, yeah. We or getting him on the show would be even better. 
We're looking into it. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking into it. And he's looking into the real killers. Here they are out there. Yeah. So uh, keep your eyes peeled if you see someone suspicious. Could be OJ's uh, wife's killer. Yeah, could be. Or it just could be OJ himself. I don't know. Either way, for Danthony Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Mm-hmm.